Weight loss is something of a holy grail for pharmaceutical companies. There is a large and frankly ever-growing market for those types of drugs, both in the U.S. and abroad, and the list of medications that have tried and failed to crack that marketplace is also growing. Now we have a bunch of news reports about the SCALE study, which was a trial looking at loraglutide for weight loss. The drug is made by Novo Nordisk and is being marketed under the name Saxenda. Now the news outlets have done their part by getting some of the information out there, but when your patients come to you and ask about loraglutide, you might want to give them a little bit more information than what you can get from CNN. So today we are taking a second look at the SCALE study. Let's start with the basics. Loraglutide is a glucagon-like peptide analog. Now, glucagon-like peptide 1 is an incretin family protein. It increases insulin secretion, insulin sensitivity, it slows gastric emptying, and it promotes feelings of satiety. As such, loraglutide was originally used and approved for patients with type 2 diabetes. The fact that it led to weight loss was, I think, a bit of a happy accident for Novo Nordisk. Now, the details of the trial are relatively straightforward. We have 3,700 people, all with a BMI greater than 30, or between 27 and 30 with relevant comorbidity, and none of whom had diabetes. They were randomized in a 2 to 1 ratio to receive loraglutide or a placebo plus lifestyle intervention. The endpoint was change in weight, and in that capacity, loraglutide did pretty well. There was about 8 kilograms of weight loss over the course of the year in the intervention group compared to only 3 in the control group. Now, many news outlets have reported that a 5-kilogram weight loss for a drug that costs $1,000 a month might not be reasonable, but I think we can dig a little bit deeper than that. Let's take a look at the study design. First of all, I want you to look at this slide, which shows their description of power calculation for the study. This study was designed with a whopping 99% power to detect an outcome. In fact, by my calculations, it had around 99.99% .99 power to detect an outcome were one to exist. If you wanted to do this study with a more traditional 90% power to detect an outcome, you would need around 150 people, not 3,700 people. In other words, Novo Nordisk was betting big on this study. They did not want to miss a signal if it was there, and they spent the money to prove it. Whether that will pay off in the end remains up to history. Another thing I want to point out is that Novo Nordisk provided statistical analysis and editorial assistance for the paper. Now, they were tied in to most of the outcomes because they were pre-specified. So what's more interesting is in the stuff that was left out of the paper, and that's what I want to hit on here. Let's take a look at figure one. This is the important figure. This is the weight loss in the two groups. Take a look at the error bars. What do you think those mean? Well, if they're standard deviations, then the weight loss in the loraglutide group was remarkably consistent. But they are not standard deviations. They are standard errors, which is a little bit less useful in this context. This is what the graph would look like if you used standard deviations instead. It's a bit more informative. We'd be able to tell our patients that, yes, you would lose more weight with loraglutide on average, but your mileage may vary. There's also no discussion of how well blinding worked. And if you read between the lines a little bit, it seems that blinding might not have worked very well at all. The rate of withdrawal of consent was 20% in the placebo arm, compared to only 10% in the loraglutide arm. Now, how did people know they were getting drugs? Well, it could be as simple as the side effects. If you look at this graph, you can see that a full 25% of people getting loraglutide had nausea at the beginning of the study. And there were a slew of other GI effects that were associated with loraglutide. So it's quite likely that people knew what drug they were getting. And that can certainly bias the results. Now, this matters particularly in a trial that was done in multiple countries. This study was done in 27 countries and 191 sites. As for the main issue you see in the press, that the $1,000 price tag is too high for 5 kilograms of body weight. Well, we don't have to throw out the baby with the bathwater. One interesting finding here was the new rate of diabetes in the trial. It was about seven times higher in the placebo group than the loraglutide group. Of course, the overall numbers were low, but that prevention of disease could be a really important finding. One bit of bad news here is that in an extension phase of the study, once you stop loraglutide, the weight started coming back almost immediately. So treatment with this medication may be a lifetime consideration. That's a good thing for Novo Nordisk, but probably not a good thing for patients. 
In the end, after the second look, where are we at with loraglutide? Well, it does seem to promote weight loss in most people. It causes side effects in a good amount of people. It's very expensive. It may prevent diabetes. Whether the drug is broadly adopted is going to end up in the hands of insurers, frankly, who are going to decide whether the prevention of certain diseases makes it economically feasible to pay for the large price tag. But there's an elephant in the room here that we need to consider, and that is bariatric surgery. Now, bariatric surgery was not the comparator in this trial, but it is a one-time procedure that, although it has significant risks, is highly effective. And though it wasn't the comparator in the scale study, it may be the comparator going on in many of our patients' minds. Hopefully now that you know more of the details about the scale study, you can have the conversation to help your patients decide which way they wanna go. That's the skinny on loraglutide. Hope you've enjoyed this second look. For MedPage Today, I'm Perry Wilson.